Good evening and welcome to the November 19th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. I see we have uh, two newly elected uh, board members that are here tonight. Welcome John Lauterbach and Phil Rausch. If everyone would stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. First order of business, uh, Member Branstad, could you take roll? I can. President Singer. Here. I am in attendance. Secretary McFarland is not here. That's why I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> Treasurer Frizzy. Here. Uh, Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. And Member Friedel. Here. All right. Six out of seven. Great. Thank you. Uh, moving into our consent agenda, uh, would anyone, uh, I would accept a motion to uh, accept the, or to, to look at the consent agenda. I move for approval of consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5. Support. Um, and I'll go ahead and read the consent agenda. Uh, item 2.1 is approval of the meeting minutes for October 15th. Item 2.2 is uh, persons recommended for employment for the 2018-19 school year. Item 2.3 is staff members who have announced their resignations effective av as of um, November of 2018. Uh, item 2.4 is approval of payment of the school system bills and item 2.5 our legal invoices for payment. Before uh, we vote on that, does anyone uh, want to remove any of those items and talk about them individually? Seeing none, um, all in favor of approving consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Mrs. Can I just clarify, Mrs. Branstad moved and Ms. Friedel? Okay, Moving into item three, which is Board of Education Matters. Mr. Shero, uh, would you take over the presentations to the board? Our shining stars this month. Um, first up is Dave Dizek. Dave would join me here. We'll read a little bit about Dave. Dave joined the MPS Technology Department in 2000 as a district technology manager. In 2015, he was appointed interim technology director and in 2016 was appointed to fill the position permanently. He has a Bachelor of Arts degree <clears throat> from Saginaw Valley State University in Spanish and Computer Science. Dave leads our technology department with his calm, competent leadership. His team serves our district stakeholders, technology needs, with a quality customer service emphasis. His knowledge of cutting-edge technology and the ability to troubleshoot the myriad of technology issues faced by our district our size is certainly appreciated and has served the district very well through the years. Mr. Dizek was nominated for a Shining Star by an MPS staff member. Among her comments were the following. I have a student at our school who has it rough at home. During my talk with the child, he asked me if I wanted to see how we could hack into our system. I called Dave Dizek for help. Dave was awesome. He came right over, talked to the student, got to the bottom of the problem, and went above and beyond. I can say without a doubt that Dave truly made a difference in this child's life by encouraging him to work hard, be honest, and give him a path to use computers as a career opportunity. I am impressed and so thankful to work with Dave. Congratulations, Dave. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Our second shining star is Trisha Clancy. Trisha, join us. Sorry, I didn't say Patricia, just Trisha. Call her, so. A little bit about Trisha. Ms. Clancy joined the MPS team as a second grade teacher at Woodcrest <clears throat> Elementary in 1990. Approximately 12 years later, she moved into the role of reading recovery teacher at Woodcrest. And in 2007, Trisha moved to the first grade classroom position at East Lawn Elementary. In 2016, Trisha began a brand new assignment. She moved from teaching elementary students to secondary students. She began her teaching math and English language arts at sixth grade students at Jefferson Middle School. This year, her teaching assignment is teaching solely ELA to the sixth grade Huskies. 
Trisha earned her Bachelor's of Arts degree in education from the University of Michigan in 1990 and her Master's degree in Early Childhood Development from Central Michigan University in 1996. Ms. Clancy was nominated for a Shining Star by an MPS colleague. Among her comments were the following. Trisha goes above and beyond. She is consistently seeking ways to implement new strategies and instruction to ensure all students reach their true potential. In addition to always helping students, Trisha is always willing to take on leadership roles in our building. Whenever administration asks her to share expertise with her colleagues or lead, participate in building-wide initiatives, she never hesitates. She is always offering insight and different perspectives, knowing that teamwork and collaboration will improve learning. She truly wants what's best for kids for the Jefferson community. Congratulations, Aww, Patricia. Thank you. <laughs> And our presentation tonight is from H.H. Dow High, and I think Mr. Poole is going to introduce who he brought with him tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We have had a fantastic fall at Dow High School, and that's uh, a lot to say for our senior class. And you're going to hear from a lot of the seniors uh, this evening regarding our uh, Go Green Club. But just a little summary of the fall so far, very successful uh, fall season. Um, we had three teams compete for state championships, which is awesome. Um, this past weekend we had Ren Fair, and there were a lot of talented Chargers on stage. So I am not that talented Charger, but we have a lot of talented Chargers that are going to come up here and talk about the Go Green Club. And Mrs. Roberts is our advisor. So Mrs. Roberts. Thank you, Dr. Poole, and good evening, <clears throat> everyone. We are... Uh, sincerely grateful to be here this evening and tell you about what's been going on. Um, we're also excited to tell you a little bit about the history, but mostly about all the projects that we have, ongoing projects uh, that we have going. And um, if you have not heard about Go Green up until this point, uh, let me start out by saying it is a group of very enthusiastic um, environmental activists who have been doing a lot of positive things um, to make a difference both at Dow High and in the community. And with me tonight, I have all five of the Go Green officers as well as one of our founding members. And so I'm going to turn the presentation over to them and let them tell you all about it. Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Velasquez and I am the president of the Go Green Club. Uh, my friend Jacqueline Lauren, who's behind me, she was the first one to introduce me to this club last year and when I first saw everything. It was just started out as Recycling Cub and some small projects, but it has grown so much more than that. But to start us off, Jacqueline is going to tell us a little bit more about the recycling. Okay, time out. I can't get there. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. My name is Jacqueline Lauren. I'm the vice president. Uh, Dow High has been recycling for years. Um, this image actually demonstrates one week's worth of recycling at Dow High. Um, students and staff fill up the 12 96-gallon containers that we have about twice a week, and this is just one week's worth, so we find that very um, good that we're recycling so much of it now. Um, we have been recycling with the kitchen staff, and the kitchen staff has been very collaborative. Um, they, the student leadership and Kitchen staff work together. The student leadership goes in and they collect the recycling in the morning almost every day. Um, we love that the staff and students are being involved together and cooperating, and we enjoy that they're co comfortable coming to us with new ideas. And for instance, uh, one of the band members actually came to us because they noticed that there are no recycle bins at the football stadium, and they said, could you help us to collect the recycling after the games? And we said, yes, we could love to help. And the goal from this is that we would like to get recycle bins. Uh, we have a member that actually jumped on this project right away and she loves the fact that she can collaborate with Midland High and start working to get recycle bins in the stadium. Um, because of the recycling movement that we have been encouraging at Dow High, we're hoping our goal is to have one recycle bin for every trash can that we have right now and we're hoping that that will just that would be great to have even more recycling. So we have become aware of the 
um, this, how China is becoming more selective of collecting the recycling from U.S. and other parts of the world of the recycling that we give them. And we realize how this is going to affect Dow High in the future. And um, we want to start producing a reduce campaign because of the recycling that they that we have right now, but we would like to reduce because that would be even better to not use as much single-use plastics. Good evening. I'm Karina Gibson, and I'll be talking about the sharing carts and sharing shelves. These are both, both important additions to Dow High because they reduce waste and promote reuse. The sharing carts are located in the Dow High cafeteria, and they were initially suggested by the cafeteria ladies. Um, the workers there saw that students would buy the fruit and dairy products that were complementary with their meals and immediately throw them away because they didn't want them. Our solution was to place the sharing cart in the cafeteria where students can put unwanted fruit and dairy products. Any students that would like an extra drink or snack can take from this cart and at the end of the day anything that is left over will be sent to the charger cooking class and then to the open door. The sharing shelves are in the library, and this is a place for students to put any extra school supplies or stationery that they don't need. And rather than throwing away, any extra, chart, um, any extra school supplies can be taken by chargers that need it. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the uh, education part of our program. So we bring in a lot of guest speakers, and over the Earth Week last year, we had the professor from SVSU named Marty Artford talk to us about the Saginaw watershed, and we also brought in an internationally recognized videographer named Peter Sinclair, and he talked to us a little bit about the dark snow project he work on, worked on. So we like to educate our Dow High students and ourselves about these local and global issues. And over those two days that we had those guest speakers, we brought in about 600 students to listen to them. Hi, my name is Emilio Cuellar. I'm the club enthusiast. <laughs> just like Isabel said, our club emphasizes on educating our school on very important topics, not only in our country, but in our community. So during the SAT testing week, we reused the paper that was covering the windows in our library, and we used them to promote not only our club, but important uh, pr important things that we were going to do that week, like giving out milkweed seeds that help preserve the population of the monarch butterflies. And we also placed their banners that promoted the guest speakers that come in that we got for Earth Week and our competition for recycling that we did for each individual class. So we got, we got a lot of recycling that week and it was really, it was really fantastic. And this year we plan on doing the same thing, but um, going on the topic of the diminishing bee population. And then more on the topic of awareness. So we also like to promote reusing things. So we printed our own Go Green water bottles and we handed these out at some of the pre presentations around our school. And we also sold these at the Dow High 50th anniversary. And as you can see on the slideshow, there's a little um, Go Green logo on some of them, and the clubs like to make little locker signs just to show which clubs you're in, and we decided to use the kitchen can lids, and we re reused them and spray painted them and made our own locker signs. And if you also um, notice, we, our ho homecoming banner this year, we painted on an old window shade. <laughs> Love it. <clears throat> and going out in the community, we, uh, we went to the Millen Center for the Arts during the, there was an exhibition sponsored by the American Chemical Society, and we taught the public how to make reusable bags out of used t-shirts. And the American Chemical Society also came out to us to help them with uh, something that they want to do with giving out free reusable straws, which is something very interesting, which uh, ironically, our AP Bio class was also talking about around the same time, so it's kind of all going together, and we're really excited to join them. And also during the Dow High's 50th anniversary, we had a little stand there, and we showed people our solar panel, which was made by one of our very own members, which is really cool. And we just um, showed them how you can charge your phone while using that solar panel, which was really interesting. 
Okay, hi, my name is Maureen Meadow. I'm the club secretary, and I'd like to talk to you guys about one of our newer and bigger projects, our greenhouse. Last spring, we began touring several greenhouses for research purposes. And in our photos, this is the greenhouse that we toured at SVSU. And SVSU donated to us a greenhouse, and we were able to reuse a lot of the parts within the greenhouse. And we were also able to take it down with the help of SVSU students and staff, including a group of international students that were studying at SVSU, and many other community members as well as club members. And because of all the help we got, we were able to effectively bring it to our Dow High location. We reused as much of it as we could. We reused a lot of the wood, the purlins, the fan, the heater, the doors, as well as the barrels. And with the extra wood, we intend to make tables for our greenhouse. Um, we were able to complete this project with the help of the Midland Area Community Foundation as they gave us a grant which helped us purchase a lot of our tools necessary for the construction of the greenhouse. And we also were given very generous assistance from Gay Excavating as well as Great Lakes Bay Construction. And we'd also like to give a huge thank you to Mary Fredell for helping us build the greenhouse. <laughs> I, I thought that picture was <laughs> familiar. Did look familiar. You had longer there. hair than that. <laughs> All right, so I'm Jason Wegner. I'm the treasurer of Go Green Club at Dow. And um, the excavation of the site took uh, place in August, and it took maybe a couple days, about a week. Um, we've been working ever since then, on mostly on Saturdays, but occasionally some Sundays, some after school, with some various odds and ends to get done, um, especially with winter approaching. Um, we put the plastic on just before the snow came. I think it was the day before <laughs> the first snowstorm. Um, and it... It really took a lot of uh, members to do it, and we couldn't be like we couldn't do this without people like Mary Fredell or people from <laughs> Gay Excavating or Great Lakes Bay Construction. Um, it's just it was a big project, and we're still ongoing with it. Um, the goals for the project include uh, things such as composting, um, growing herbs, uh, produce for the Charger Chefs Club, and uh, for the food classes, and even field trips. We had talks since last winter, I believe, of taking uh, for field trips for elementary school kids and inviting them to come grow and instead of those grow labs that everybody sees when they're a kid um, in and, and a real greenhouse and something that they can actually even have an ecosystem with. Mm -hmm. um, also, that includes uh, hydroponics. Um, a subset of that would be aquaponics, which I personally like a little bit better. Um, <laughs> And possibly vermiculture, which is things like fertilizer, which, which are like from worms and those such things. Um, they're all powered by solar, which would be a main um, focal point for our greenhouse. Um, because of there's so many, because of this uh, plethora of capabilities for it, um, such as data analysis, geological studies, um, including in, as such as weather um, and coding uh, for the actual system for it to work to uh, have a solar tracking system. We had a toxin for that. And many of these products will be invaluable for the planned IB environmental science class that Mr. Bauer will be heading at Dow High, um, which students will be able to, head, uh, to take at the beginning of the fall for next year. So Go Green is really excited for all the future projects that we're going to be having. So for the future, as Jason mentioned, we're really excited to have an off-the-grid greenhouse and have it incorporated with classes at Dow High and teaching. It's a teaching experience. Um, we will be expanding and improving our recycling program. We're also going to, we're hopefully going to obtain a Michigan Green School status because of all the work that um, Go Green has done in the past year and this year and hopefully the future, of course. And we are going to continue promoting reducing consumption of resources and also continue actively encouraging green initiatives in our community. So as you can see, we've been very busy and productive for the last 18 months or so. Um, we have encountered numerous uh, challenges, um, of course, and we anticipate probably many more challenges along the way. Um, but we've learned a lot already um, from each other, from other people, and um, uh, our momentum and our passion has kept us just charging forward. So um, club members have their sights set on some pretty amazing and worthwhile goals, um, projects that are very collaborative and cross-curricular and real-world applicable. 
um, projects that to us seamlessly just tie in with uh, our STEM curriculum and our new IB environmental science class that Jason mentioned. Um, we greatly appreciate all the community involvement and support that we've had. Many of the people and companies have been mentioned already, and some of the other ones are on this slide here. Um, Dow High staff has been wonderful. Uh, just, I mean, we've had lots and lots of involvement and support, and we really, really appreciate it. So, and we will continue to seek out that support from the community, and we welcome any help moving forward. So. Um, once again, thank you very, very much for your support and for allowing us to come and tell you about what we've been doing. And if you have any questions, we would love to try and answer them for you. Great. Thank you. What a wonderful presentation. I'm sure we have lots of questions, so I'll open it up to the board. How many people do you have involved in the club? Like, do you have a good amount of underclassmen to carry on this? Because I think you mentioned, are you all seniors? Except for Korea. Okay, I guess it's up to you now. <laughs> <laughs> the officers, yeah, four out of five officers okay, are seniors. Okay. Yep. But um, we have been, we had a new club member today, and every okay. week there's at least, you know, one or two or three more, and most of the time they have been underclassmen. Okay, so I excellent. would say it's probably maybe two-thirds underclassmen now, or maybe at least mm -hmm. half and half. So, yeah. We've also been doing um, presentations around the school to a lot of the underclassmen just to get them more aware of the very good. I just love what you're doing. I'm passionate about that kind of thing, and uh, especially your greenhouse. That, that to me, is just very, very exciting. And well, I love we would love to have you come. And <laughs> <laughs> just let me know. I love to dig in the dirt. Um, I, uh, and I love that it's you know, going to be a part of the curriculum. You right. can cross-curricular with that mm -hmm. in the club and, and involve so many people and, and staff. What a wonderful idea. Thank you. We're excited about it, too. I have been very impressed um, right along watching these guys working week after week, weekend after weekend on this project and then um, not afraid to try and, you know, those great big power augers. And we had <laughs> three girls and one guy on that power auger, you know, digging the holes for the for the post and, and using a, a pipe driver tool and, and putting all your m muscle behind it to get those pipes, those posts in. Um, just amazing um, the work that they did and weren't afraid to use that power equipment. So it was really cool. Yeah, we have definitely learned a lot already. <laughs> <laughs> also, I wanted to say that um, when I attended the uh, school board uh, conference this year and they uh, one of the conference uh, sessions that I went to, there was a group that was talking about their district and the use of a greenhouse and how they incorporated um, using, um, uh, 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 putting it together with a program with their special needs students. And um, the special needs students would plant the seedlings in December and then use it as a money-making project and be sell selling the seedlings in the spring um, when people are getting ready to put their flower gardens and vegetable gardens in. And I thought, wow, what another great way to involve our whole school community mm -hmm. and actually raise funds to you know, buy those gloves and those plastic bags that we need for the recycling. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Yeah. I mean, many times we get asked questions and we don't know all the answers because we don't have everything planned out. Um, there are so many students that are interested in so many different things, you know, uh, you know, vertical planting of tomatoes and hydroponics and aquaponics and composting. And so, I mean, we didn't really have a set in stone plan going into this and that's actually kind of the beauty of it because if somebody comes to us with a program like that, you know, we're open to whatever, so. Yeah. Uh, another neat thing, I think, is the idea that I think you guys are, are looking at um, possibly eventually making it off the grid and having it totally be uh, self-supporting with, with just solar and yes. wind power, yep. which would be a really neat yep. that undertaking. Is, yeah, that is definitely one of our goals. And um, the young man who... Um, put together the solar panel that you saw in one of the slides is really just a solar guru. And um, he actually built um, a system for his house and he powers all of his electronic equipment and computers and stuff in his bedroom off of solar panels. And so 
um, yeah, we um, they're expensive, but we're going to start small and keep adding on to it. And so, you know, um, you know, if you know somebody who knows somebody, we'd love to, you know, talk to them about it. So. <laughs> Well, thank you. Our uh, environment is so precious and so important, and to have a group of concerned students that put so much energy and thought into how to make it better, not only for Dow High, but for our community, it's, it's really exciting to hear, and I appreciate the collaboration between other units as well. You're not doing this only as a student body, but really looking to um, include others in the, in the school as well as in the community. And your reference to China and what China is looking for in their recyclables um, says a lot to me about uh, how engaged you are and um, how important this project is to you. So thanks for your research, and thanks for putting your whole heart into this. And uh, I'm excited about our future with uh, leaders like you um, going forth and, and really caring about our environment. So thanks for coming and sharing. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. That logo was pretty cool too. Did you see the little lightning bolts? Yeah. yeah. That was designed by a 2017 graduate. 18, Jacob. 18. Yeah. Jacob. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's Jacob? Um, he was a kid that went all the way through school with my daughter. Christensen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Now we will move into item 3.3, .3, and this is for information. Uh, we have upcoming revisions to policy 3120 and 4120 regarding conflict of interest. Uh, we, we talked about this um, back in August, and we put a committee together to uh, recommend um, changes to this policy. That committee has uh, looked at the policy and now would like to move that forward to the uh, administration committee to look f look at the policy and then bring that forward to the board. Um, item 3.4 is for action, and I'll hand this over to Mr. Bertin. Yeah, uh, we have three expulsions to move on this evening. Each of them will require an individual roll call vote, so we'll go in, in order there. Um, first is student A. A board subcommittee of two Board of Education members, Superintendent Cheryl, myself, and school administrators met on November the 6th in regard to student A, who is being recommended for expulsion. It is the committee's recommendation that student A serve that expulsion. Student A can, re, can apply for reinstatement for the 1920 school year. The student will be presented the opportunity for off-site academic services during the expulsion. And again, this requires a roll call vote from the board. Okay, so we'll need a motion. I move for approval of the student A expulsion. Second. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go into a roll call vote. All right, President Singer? Aye. Well, myself is aye. Treasurer Frizzi? Aye. Member Baker? Aye. Member Blasey? Aye. Member Friedel? Aye. Very good, and uh, we have all agreement, and now uh, we'll go into student B. Yep. For student B, a board subcommittee of two Board of Education members, Superintendent Cheryl, myself, and school administrators met also on November 6th in regard to student B, who's being recommended for expulsion. It is the committee's recommendation that student B serve that expulsion. Student B can apply for reinstatement for the 1920 school year if an academic course of study needs to occur beyond this senior year. The student will be receiving off-site academic services during the expulsion, and this action does require a roll call vote from the board. Okay, and I'll accept a motion. So moved. Support. Is there any discussion on student B? Seeing none, uh, we'll move into a roll call vote. President Singer? Aye. Aye. Myself, uh, Treasurer Frizzi? Aye. Member Baker? Aye. Member Blasey? Aye. Member Fridell? Aye. 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Singer, that was Mrs. Burdell made the motion and Ms. Branson seconded? That's correct. Thank you. And we had six ayes and no nays, so it carries. And we'll move into student C. A board subcommittee of two Board of Education members, Superintendent Cheryl, myself, and school administ administrators met on November 6th in regards to student C, who is being recommended for expulsion. It's the committee's recommendation that student C serve the expulsion. Student C can apply for reinstatement for the fourth quarter of this school year. The student will be receiving off-site academic services during the expulsion. I'll accept a motion. I make that motion. Support. Motion made by Mary Fredell, supported by Patrick Brzee. Uh, is there any discussion on student C? A little clarity here. <clears throat> we don't identify the students by law, and uh, the first two were um, charges that require a 180-day expulsion, where the third one does not. It leaves it up to discrepancy of the time period for us. And I'm glad we have the ability to have off-site services, and I hope that all of them take advantage of that. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Now we'll, we'll move into roll call vote. President Singer? Aye. Myself? Aye. Treasurer Frizzi? Aye. Member Baker? Aye. Member Blazy? Aye. And Member Friedel? Aye. And that's unanimous as well. Thank you. Mr. Bruton? Thank you. We'll move into item 3.5, which is for action. We have the summer tax collection. Yeah, uh, as you know, uh, in, uh, in our tax collection in the city, we have the city collect both summer and winter tax collections. Uh, it's a requirement, which we do annually before January 1st, um, is we uh, ask the city to collect both a summer and a winter collection where the rest of the townships do the winter. So it's a bit of a formality that we have to pass the resolution, which you saw in it. I remember, we don't have to read the whole resolution. Usually a tax item we do a roll call vote on, so we do that. And then we send that notice on to the city that explains to them that we will be collecting or asking them to collect that that's, uh, summer tax along with the winter tax. Great. Now I'll accept a motion, and we have a little sheet. Whoever wants to move. I move to approve the resolution for the levy of summer 2019 taxes on property located within the school district and within the city of Midland. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. Support. Moved by Lynn Baker, supported by Angela Brandstadt. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move into a roll call vote. <coughs> President Singer. Aye. Um, I vote aye. Treasurer Frizzi? Aye. Member Baker? Aye. Member Blasey? Aye. And Member Friedel? Aye. Thank you. Great. Passes unanimously. Uh, moving into item 3.6 for action, we have district property and casualty insurance renewal. Yep, this is the renewal that uh, comes about annually in November. Um, it is with uh, Yetter Insurance Group for a total cost of $221,061. Uh, there's a brief breakdown in your agenda. You also received a more detailed uh, spreadsheet in your packet with the different uh, coverages. Um, I guess a couple things I would just keep you informed of. Uh, we are adding as we go because we are in construction phases, so this one would include um, uh, Woodcrest and Plymouth, so that's about $3.2 million more of uh, facilities about 20,000 square feet along with other things we've been doing uh, kind of removes East Lawn back to uh, a building which you know we are going to demolish here someplace in the near future so it's insured for less um, the other two buildings Seabird and Chestnut Hill right now are under a builder's risk policy that stays in force until you complete all the building not just the uh, new addition but everything that you're doing in the building and at that point it will change again sometime here the only other thing I was going to mention to you that we've been working with the insurance company for, uh, we now have a lot of laptops in the district, which doesn't present a problem when they're all out there with everybody. Uh, but we have noticed that we're bringing them together in a single location or multiple single locations in the summertime. So one of the things we're going to do when we hit summertime is add them back on for those three months, increase our insurance coverage on those laptops when they're back in in, in a single location. 
Um, so that's one thing. The other thing that you'll notice and we'll have to talk about in the future is um, it, there's a little bit of law enforcement protection that you have. And if, as we add the school resource officers, it would really be just a matter of talking about raising our um, coverage, uh, the amount of money that we're covered for uh, in those cases. Though they're, since they're employees of the city, uh, it's not our, we wouldn't be the main liability, but as you know, if anything were to happen, I'm, I'm sure we would be included. So those are the two things. I think it represents roughly a 4% increase, and when you consider that what we've added, um, it's within reason. Um, same with the uh, autos up just a little bit, but again, we've added new vehicles to our fleet, new, newer buses, and all those things, of course. Uh, pulled it up a little bit. It's still far below uh, when we had all 12 buildings uh, at elementary, and so uh, we haven't reached that again, but we're recommending approval for this. Um, one of the questions that comes up sometimes is, you know, did you bid that out? We, we, there, there's no legal requirement to, and we usually let it run for a period of time before we do bid it out. Uh, my recommendation to you <clears throat> as a board would be uh, get Adams completed with its square footage done, because then when you bid it out, you're bidding out a complete package. Right now it's an ever-changing package, even within the course of the school year. Mm -hmm. So I think you'd be in a lot better place to bid out and get real accurate bids from people when Adams is completed uh, because then your major changes at your uh, elementary buildings, which are the big additional properties you're putting in, would be done. Uh, the things that you're doing at the secondary level are improvements, but we already ensure what's being replaced. So if you're doing a media center, it's another media center. You might have to add a little bit more, but it's, it's still the media center. It's not additional space. So just would be a recommendation for the future. Very good. Thank you, Bob. Um, I had a quick question for Bob. Can we move? Yeah, we got to move. And then, okay. yep. and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I'll accept a motion for item 3.6 for action. So moved. Support. Uh, moved by McFarland. Or, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Brunel. They're <laughs> supported yeah. by Branstead. <laughs> That's hard for him to do. <laughs> um, so now, uh, are there any questions or comments or concerns? Brad? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Uh, we have the big investment with the new antenna tower and all of that equipment. Is that part of this? That's under this policy as well? Yeah, anything for liability and casualty would be in there. There's the only thing that comes to mind um, because it's through the state is pollution insurance, which is now done through the state, so it's not there. So that would all be there. All our computer equipment, uh, repeaters, antennas would all be part of this. And we went over this um, thoroughly in our finance facilities and operations meeting. So a lot of our mo most of our questions were answered there. And I appreciate your work breakdown here and your recommendation for uh, looking into uh, having a new bid after Adams is completed. Are there any other questions or concerns? Seeing none. We'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving item 3.6, District Property and Casualty Insurance Renewal, say aye. 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 And all opposed? And it carries unanimously. Item 3.7 is for action. We have the sales of uh, the sale of Mills property. Um, again, that was something that the board had directed through FFO that the district accept some sealed bids on vacant property out on Baker Road, which is the former mill school site. Uh, the four bids were provided in your package. I was brought back to the November 5th meeting of the FFO committee. Um, at that point, they, uh, they directed the administration to work with the high bidder. And so we've come back to you um, with uh, an, uh, seeking approval of a, an agreement which the high bidder, uh, Robert Resmer, um, would pay 50000 and the district would cover the closing costs. Very good. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve item 3.7, sale of Mills property. Support. Moved by Frizzy, support by Brandstadt. Uh, we'll open it up for discussion. How much are the closing costs? Uh, somewhere between, we think, 15 and 21 at the high, 2100. Some of that would have been our legal fees anyways. We're not picking. We're just picking up a small We tried point. to negotiate that as well. <clears throat> right. He wasn't going to go that far. And, okay. Um, most closings, it is the seller who pays that cost. So we did come up 
a little bit from their first offer. You something did. Okay. Get yeah. something yeah. more than initial. Well, and I know this has been a, something we've been looking to sell for a very long time. And with the building on it, could never come to agreement with anyone. And so that's when we took the building down. And now it's good that there's some interest. Yeah, it became a much better piece of property right. for someone with Which the is down. what we knew when we decided to put the investment into taking the building down. Absolutely. If there's no other comments or concerns, then we'll move into a vote. Does this have to be roll of call, or can we? Okay. No. All in favor of approving the sale of the Mills property, item 3.7, say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimously. Uh, now we move into item four, which is request to address the board. At this time, we've had no one uh, officially request to address the board, but if there's anyone out in... Uh, the chairs that would like to address the board now, you can. Everyone's jumping up and excited about that. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, we will move right into <coughs> item five, which is curriculum instruction and assessment. We have uh, meeting minutes from October 15th from Ms. Friedel. Um Yes, we met on October 15th. Brad Blazy, Patrick Frizee, Penny Miller Nelson, and Mike Charo. Uh, guests, guests present were Luann Benzinger, Benzinger and Melissa Toner, and Melissa Toner did a great deal of the presenting. Open Education Resources, OER, Melissa Toner and Luann Benzinger provided an overview of OERs. OERs are freely opened licensed educational material that can be used by educators. They are vetted against standards curated in an accessible repository and are typically highly interactive and engaging with features such as embedded video, interactive maps, and primary source documents. The committee examined several samples and discussed how moving in this direction could benefit students, teachers, and be cost effective. Several groups of MPS teachers are exploring OERs and considering future use. The second part of the meeting was blended learning. Melissa Toner shared information about various forms of blended learning, noting that MPS currently used, uses the enriched virtual model where students have scheduled face-to-face -face classes and are free to complete the remaining coursework remotely. Currently, two courses, the Advanced Business and Modern Global Topics, use this model. More students are requesting flexibility offered by fully online and blended learning. And there is a strong desire to have MPS teachers teaching these courses. To support this, several MPS teachers complete a, completed a paid summer learning experience where they used research-based practices to develop a course and learn how to facilitate in a blended format. These courses have been evaluated against a quality rubric, rubric to ensure that they meet MPS standards. Through this work, MPS will have five new blended courses offered in the future. We adjourned at 3.30, and our next meeting is uh, November 26, which is a week from today, due to a scheduling conflict. I, I appreciate that. Our schools are always looking at research-based practices, and it's not about just creating um, a, a class uh, that can be taken online, but it's really using research and best practices. And when Patrick and Mary and I went to the Michigan Association of School Board conferences, they talked about um, the importance of using uh, the, the research-based practices as well. And then knowing that we have a quality rubric to... Um, follow to ensure that we have a high quality uh, product is important. I think it's important too that that um, we we are offering, we're, we're getting on board with offering Midland Public School standards for those online learning courses instead of um, them just taking an online uh, learning course from the Michigan Virtual uh, School which you know, it's there, but I think we can do a better job yeah, as middle public school. I can school. percent agree with that one <laughs> <laughs> from my own experience. Yeah, <laughs> It's a good direction. Thank you. 
Uh, moving into <coughs> item six, which is finance facilities and operations. We have minutes from the November 5th uh, meeting. Mr. Fruzzi? Yes, we met November 5th. Uh, myself, Pam, Ryan, Mr. Cooper, and Daryl were all present. Uh, we discussed the various items at the meeting. Uh, number one, the September financial reports. It was noted that these expenses in this period were lower due to one less pay than last year, and cash receipts were also lower due to the timing of the tax payment from the city to the district. Number two, on the update on the bids received on the vacant mills property, FFO committee directed Mr. Cooper to work with the high bidder. And like I said earlier, we actually countered back and wanted a little bit more than mm -hmm. originally come in, so we feel pretty good about what we received for that property. Um, number three, update on the Midland Community Stadium press box. Uh, four, summer tax collection request, which we heard earlier tonight as it went through. Uh, number five, renewal of the district's property and casualty insurance from your insurance company. And then discussing the bond, Mr. Dumbro and the committee reviewed the current bid schedule of upcoming projects, which are mainly going to be for Adams and then completing Siebert and Chestnut Hill, I believe. Uh, next meeting is Monday, December 3rd at 5 o'clock. Very good. Thank you. Um, Mike, are you going to address where we are on the, on the uh, press box in your... Well, I wasn't, but I, I can. I'll do it at the end there <laughs> okay, for you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Item 6.2 for information, we have gifts. Yeah, tonight we have about 18 gifts there worth uh, $14,137.63. Uh, tonight you're going to notice quite a few robotics ones in there from different organizations to our various uh, robotics organizations. Uh, gifts from the PTOs, uh, some boosters clubs, and then... The uh, Midland Area Community Foundation um, with various grants, uh, the nonviolence grants are coming out right at this time. So you'll see some schools with that already and uh, a couple other things there. Uh, for 6.3, though, I do have one that takes action because of the size of the gift. Um, it's, um, I guess, in, in essence, it's, it's two gifts, but it's one amount that they gave uh, from the Dow um, uh, Chemical Company. It's a $6,500 uh, upgrade for the lobby at the auditorium, so it now has a closed circuit, a big screen monitor out in the lobby, so if you have to step out, you can see it. They can also put crawls and advertise across them. And the other part was um, we have the projector, which was mounted in the balcony, which if you got a lot of people in the balcony, even if they s sit still, it moved. Um, which drove some people crazy. Uh, and so they moved it down so it's on the, the first floor deck and projects. So because of the size of that gift, you, you need to take action and approve and accept that gift. Okay, very good. I'll accept a motion. I move we accept the gift of $6,500 from Dow Chemical for the upgrade, uh, lobby upgrade and projector move. Support? Moved by Fidel, support by Baker. Um, all in favor of, ex oh, would anyone like to make comment or have questions to talk about? Thank How you. wonderful. Thank yes. You. How yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very nice to have that kind of support for sure. Okay. All in favor of, uh, approving, accepting this $6,500 gift, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed. And it passes unanimously. I have, uh, two more items for information because they're gifts of items and not monetary amounts. Both the central auditorium, again, but an electronic piano, and also another monitor um, for central auditorium. So we'll have two there. The other one is uh, on a cart, so it can move throughout, but you'll find it many times sitting in the lobby. That I think they were using it at the last uh, play with, like, the leads were up there, little bios about them. So oh, they've got a new one there that they had. So those are two gifts that we greatly appreciate. Nice. Thank you. Um, moving into item seven, uh, item 7.1, Mr. Sherrill. That'll be Mr. Or, Brutin. Yep, I'll take that one. Uh, two condolences to pass along this evening. One to the family of Carolyn Fretz, who passed away on October the 15th. Ms. Fretz was a physical education teacher at Northeast Middle School for 29 years, retiring in 1986. And also to Inez Melvin, who passed away on October 23rd. Mrs. Melvin was an elementary teacher at Woodcrest Elementary for 23 years, retiring in 1990. 
Our deepest sympathies to them. Uh, thank you. Now we'll go to item eight, which is scheduled activities for information. Uh, we just have the Board of Education meetings listed on the agenda uh, that are to come yet in the year. And then item nine, which is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. And item 10, which is study discussion. Uh, we're going to have the, our study discussion now, and then after that, we'll move into closed session. And then after closed session, um, we'll adjourn the meeting. So I know a lot of the folks in the audience won't want to stay around and just wait for us to come out and adjourn. So once we go into closed session, you're, you're welcome to leave. And then at the, uh, before we go into closed session, if there's any other students out there that need uh, their uh, agenda signed for their class, then there'll be an opportunity for you to come up as well. All right, so item 10.1 is Board of Education Officer Nominating Committee. So uh, what we do is we uh, nominate a committee of three who will get together and um, decide who to recommend to the board for a action to, uh, to be in uh, the roles for next year, come January. So I will pass out the nominating, the... Um, Voting certificates, if everyone could choose three. Get one. I get one. <laughs> and then uh, fold it in half, and we'll put them up here, and then Cynthia will pick them up and tally. Should I wait for you to tally them, or no. we'll just talk about that later? All right. <clears throat> All right, so item 8, our 10.2 is hearing for the board members, so I'll just start here with Mary. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations again to the Shining Stars. Um, I think that's such a nice honor um, that, our, that our superintendent extends to um, outstanding people. Um, and uh, thank you again to Go Green. I have down here efforts to keep our schools, community, and world green with their envir environmental efforts starting at Dow High. Um, just amazing the, the initiatives that they have taken into place. I also want to thank um, the district for the opportunity to attend the um, Michigan School Board Conference that was held in Grand Rapids. It was a wonderful opportunity to learn so much more um, asking questions of uh, people who know, uh, legal teams, and um, also a chance to network with other districts and see what, what works for them and, and gleaning new ideas. It was just a wonderful uh, opportunity. Would encourage everybody that has a chance, our new board members, take advantage of it. Thanks, Mary. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate our shining stars, uh, Dave and Tricia. Um, as well as a great presentation by all the Dow High uh, students and um, Dr. Poole and Mrs. Roberts. Um, I guess I won't go into that any further. You covered that quite well. And um, probably just a congratulations, I think, to the Midland High football team. They, their bid for a state championship is over, but they had a great run. Very and nice. um, neat to see that... They really turned it around and stuck to it after a very rough start of the season to go as far as they did. I think there's a lot of growth through those young men and uh, a lot of those seniors. So my hat's off to them. Excellent. I agree. I agree with both. Um, I'd like to thank the community for, uh, for the support during the election. Uh, I know um, John Lauterbach and Phil Rausch, uh, will be joining us in January, and uh, I think our board is sad to see Patrick will finish off uh, the rest of this year, and he's been a very important part of our board and a very important voice um, to our school district as well as our community, and I encouraged him to stay engaged, and uh, we still have a lot of work to do before 
January 1st, uh, but hopefully um, you stay engaged and uh, and we can support you in, in the next round. Uh, and, and Don't forget Angela. <clears throat> yeah, no, I was going to bring that up. That was in the Friday letter, too. I'm like, I guess I'm just one now. <laughs> Thank you for the kind of work. It's all right. Next year won't mind if I just put more hours in there. <laughs> and, well, I can thank Angela for her service, you know, later in December. Yeah, we don't have to do that now. Um, MASB conference. Um, I, I always uh, enjoy going, and it is an absolute uh, honor to go and represent our district um, there and also uh, glean so much from professionals. So we heard two keynote speakers. Um, one was Principal, Principal Caffell, and he talked about, is my district a better district because I lead it? And just gave a, a wonderful talk, and he's written several books and really inspired us to, to look deep at what we do at the board table and make sure that uh, what we are doing is helping our district um, move in the right direction. And then we heard from Dr. Nell Duke, who is from the University of Michigan, and she talked about how literacy must improve in our state and really um, focused on evidence-informed um, practices, and it's something I've heard around over and over in this district, so I know uh, our focus is there, and I, and I thank uh, Mr. Sherrill and your staff for that. Um, I went to a, a certified board class after that, and it was data first, and it was about high school and beyond. So how do we look at data that gives us the information that how we're preparing our students uh, kindergarten through high school that uh, we're preparing them to, for success in college and beyond. And um, that was a very good class and, and good um, skills that uh, we can use here in the district as well. Uh, just like to really encourage um, our, our board members here as well as uh, John and Phil to take adva advantage of uh, uh, educational opportunities because they are uh, important to our board and our district. Um, I'm excited that, uh, that the SROs uh, were approved mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get more support here in, a, in our uh, secondary buildings. And, um, I, and I'm happy for uh, Coleman, Meridian, and Bullet Creek to get, get that support in their buildings as well. So uh, I'll leave you All you. right. Well, um, I missed last meeting, which I was in China, which was, I think, was that where I was the last meeting? <laughs> Yeah, yes, you Poland, Poland was the month before, but anyway. <laughs> but it was interesting. I did get a chance to have some good um, conversation with one of my coworkers over there just about their education system. So it was very interesting because some things were a surprise to me, you know, and others were not. So um, I had the opportunity, was it last Friday, two Friday nights ago, to go to the Spanish Fiesta at um, Central. So that was fun. I actually took a coworker of mine who moved here a couple years ago from Mexico. So we really enjoyed ourselves walking around and um, seeing all the displays set up. And um, congratulations to our newly elected board members. And um, really, I want to thank the community. I think a lot of community members got involved this year in the election and really um, thought through who they were voting for. Um, my parents called me one day because they were working out at the community center and someone came up to them to talk about the school board election. They didn't <laughs> know, you know, who my parents were. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, no, we know, you know. And I know um, from talking to teacher friends of mine, there were a lot of discussions going on um, amongst the teachers and stuff. So I, you know, really um, appreciate the um, community getting so involved this year in the election. So, and then, um, Mike, was it two weeks ago in your um, Friday letter, talked about to be careful because it's a lame duck you know, and I thought you were talking about me, but then I realized you were talking, you were talking about um, you were talking about the Michigan legislature. So we always worry what happens in a short and a fast, quick. Right, time exactly. Period, so. so, oh, and I guess one last thing. I got this today in the mail from Air Reinhardt, but they actually are publicizing about our um, school, and that Michigan oh, Midland really? Public Schools ranks 14th in um, best school districts in Michigan. So that is all I have. <laughs> 
Well, I was uh, wanting to congratulate Dow High School for their fantastic Ren Fair performance on Friday, or, or Saturday, I guess I was there. And um, it's amazing, as usual. I am amazed at the talent, the young students, and the variety this year. There was just a lot of different kind of performances, and the MCs were marvelous. Um, thank you for, for everyone that's involved with that. It takes a lot of people to put that together, and it's always fun every year. Um, as I have sitting in front of me from our Siebert Bulldogs, I just want to acknowledge for World oh, yeah, Kindness thanks. Day, they made us kindness coins, and they have little smiles on them that say, you're the best. And it says it's to put a smile on your face, share some kindness, and you will make the world a better place. So very good timing, I think, with Thanksgiving coming up, and a reminder of all the, the good things and the blessings that we have, and I know that uh, I consider being a part of uh, Midland and Midland Public Schools one of those, and um, it has been a blessing to me and my family. The Go Green Club, amazing. As I said, I love that kind of thing, and um, I was just down uh, visiting my daughter who's teaching in Texas, and at their elementary school, huge elementary school, as we were throwing things away, they don't do any recycling. I was appalled. <laughs> but um, So this is exciting to see. And I know that our schools have been doing recycling in, in a smaller amount for years. So thank you to that, and I'm excited to see how that grows. Uh, the conference was wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we all heard some of the same speakers, the keynotes, but we broke off into smaller um, uh, clinical sessions, and one I went to was how Michigan can learn from top performing states. Very interesting. Um, we're at the bottom of the barrel in some of the things that we do in Michigan, and uh, I don't remember all the details, but then I headed to Texas, who was one of the ones near the top. But just in their discussion, it's not what we're doing here. It starts at the top in Michigan, so I think it's important that we all stay knowledgeable and see what our our state is doing, it starts from the Midland De or Michigan Department of Ed, and it was quite eye-opening to me. Um, and uh, they were very passionate about what they were talking about and saying, we can do this, we just need some changes. So those of us that are involved in education, I, it was just a reminder to pay attention to what's going on, because it is very important. And it's um, kind of embarrassing when we know all the great things that we do, that Michigan is 50th in the state. So. Hopefully that will change shortly. Uh, congratulations, Phil and John. And um, Patrick, thank you for all that you do. I know you're going to be really involved because you've got all those kiddos at Tristan <laughs> Hill. <laughs> and um, that doesn't go away. And to Dave and Tricia, thank you for all that you do. Um, it, it's been fun over the years. I've watched your job roles change as well and the responsibilities <coughs> that, that you have. And, and um, you've done so much for our district. And I think that's all. My husband kept me, I didn't go sit in those cold football games and travel, but he does. So they, uh, he gave me the updates as I was uh, out, of, out of state. And uh, as Brad said, it was amazing how they improved and how exciting it was. And the Santa Parade, there's no Midland Band because they were all at the game. And it, it's a big community um, effort and a lot of pride. So on that note, enjoy the long Thanksgiving weekend. All right. To me, uh, not that much to be said that has been said already. I always enjoy the student presentations. I learn um, something every month. I really wanted to talk to the young man who was making the solar cell um, <laughs> designs and wearing those things up. I'd like to see, pick his brain. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, Seabird Elementary, I think I got a nice candy dish from Seabird last year, a uh, uh, pottery candy. It's on my desk at work every day. I'll put this with my, with my dish. Um, I've been to the last three annual conferences for the MASB, and I have taken a ton out of those out of those conferences. Uh, it's made me a better a better board member, um, not just in the classes I've taken and the, what I've heard for presentations, but when I was brand new, getting to know the board members away. Then I've, I've had like been with Pam a few times, and I've learned a few times, and just talking to the people, making having those relationships formed has been big for me and something I uh, have appreciated. Congratulations to John and Phil. Um, I was. I hope I'm sure they'll do well, and, and uh, things will be good for them. I was, of course, disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have 
something polished written next month for my last meeting, but uh, I've had a ton of support. I'm very grateful for the support elected four years ago and all the support I've had this time. Uh, I'm always humbled by what the schools have, the staff, the work we've seen, the support I've gotten, and uh, I have a feeling you'll see me again on a ballot. Uh, this is something that's uh, near and dear to me and I'm passionate about, and no, I won't. I won't go away that easy. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's good to know. And to me. Thank you. Press box. Mary, put, it up, put me on the spot. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> um, ironically, we had a meeting today with our um, architect on the drawings um, proposal of um, two different designs. One would be the single floor design mm -hmm. um, that would allow us to have a ramp, not the elevate, very costly elevator stairway uh, device. Um, the square feet of that one was 2,600, 2,400 feet. Then he also has a three-floor one, which wow. he, he can get three because um, our present press box being two actually has like four feet underneath. Mm -hmm. And so if he could get it up a few more higher, it would be more of a storage area in that bottom area. Um, but that one would require the elevator. And so um, we had our user group there. It'll go to estimating. We'll get both costs back. And we'll be able to determine which way to go. We kind of put him on the spot, that and the estimator, and said, um, hey, come on, tell us, you know, how close are the, those two? And they figure about half. So we don't know where, where we stand on the cost or if we can afford the, the, the probably the preferred, preferred one would be the higher, the elevation of the higher one. Both have the same square footage um, for the staff in there and similar design. They both will meet the need. Higher elevation is nicer for filming and coaching and those pieces of it. But that hill is pretty high, so it'll, it'll work pretty well no matter what. Um, still working with the insurance company. The last Bob heard was last week that they... The insurance company a few weeks ago hired an architect to confirm our architect's findings that we're debating with them. They've touched base one more time, and it is in their adjuster's review. And so we're waiting for the review to come back because uh, on our debate that um, we do have to bring it up to codes, and therefore you owe us some more, more funds on that. So um, we have um, presently about 118000 from them, plus um, some incidental costs for sure coming. Um, for the temporary tents and all those pieces of it. But that's about where we stand, so um, we should know more very soon. But the design <clears throat> estimating will continue because we have to do this. Um, we, we plan on um, getting it out to bid, accepting bids, and issuing bids by March so they can begin that early summer work. So it's coming fast. We have mm -hmm. to do it anyway, so we're coming. Just a matter of the difference between us and um, the insurance settlement where you go. So. That's about the best I can give you for the press box. Well, I was just wondering if the insurance company changed their tune at all. So that was kind you know, of... You um, know, <laughs> both Bart Mallon and French, when they called them and asked them what they thought in their findings, they both came back and said they didn't debate any of our findings, but I wouldn't want to speculate, you know, where we're going to go. We believe right. we have a strong case, obviously. But we'll see where we're going. Thanks. Mike, I had a small technical question. and Somebody asked me this question. I, I did not know the answer. So... In some of the documents that were produced that uh, bring it up to code, the elevator is pretty cut and dry. We understand that one uh, was sprinkling of the press box. That is also mandatory as well, uh, uh, a wet sprinkler system. And so originally I think we were told that most likely it would need ventilation and sprinkling. Today's design didn't show that. Did you notice that, Bob? Right. I, I, I remember one in particular was the, the width of the stairwell is in the old press box, was nowhere near code. Right. Uh, so there were things like that. I, did, I know one time someone mentioned the fire suppression, but I don't remember yeah. it carrying okay. for it. Didn't show it today elevator. anyway, Brad. So he, they, they did mention that in the beginning. So I think we're yet to see exactly what all the codes were. We did share, and I don't know if we shared it out with the board or did I. We found an article, Bob actually found it, of Saugatuck. Saugatuck in that area. Yes. So, for example, um, three a few years back, they um, didn't meet codes. They were building a press box. The superintendent fought at, eight, at the ADA level, um, lost, and he chose and the board chose to build it anyway the way they were. A few years later, the guy ADA inspected it, and they were, were hammered heavily on it. And so Bob just happened to find the article. and Because we were kind of doubting a little bit of Dale. Is the, was Dale over-designing this, and where was he going? And, you know, you know. Um, doesn't look, he looks like he's right. If you're going to do it right and want to stay clean, we need to meet some of these things. Sprinkling was originally mentioned. I don't know. We're still early. The design was more of um, what well, was an artistic drawing, but what would you call it? It's not an architectural drawing. But rendering. Usually, rendering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had the layout. Had it was more for the sizes. users to know. Layout, sizes, mm -hmm. 
height, but it wasn't. It didn't have the other pieces in it. So, but I can okay. circle back with them on those pieces of it. So, more to come on. So we we learn regularly about this kind of stuff. So, um, let's move on to what I have. Lacrosse club. So we've been working with the lacrosse for quite some time. Um, certainly, our high school teams have grown. They've used our space for the youth programs for quite some time, and, <clears throat> and it's grown to the point where it's been a little bit of an issue. Um, we've met with the club and um, worked forward where they're looking for some more property and some availability. So the, the Cook properties come into play. I don't think anyone has any issue with that, them lining some fields there. Bob's been um, working with them back and forth on their ability to build a storage building. So it'd be similar to East Lawn where the Little League has built one. But we certainly want certain codes and design and know that if we ever need the property back, the building would probably ultimately become ours since it's on the property. So we're working on that piece as well. They do have some interest in the East Lawn when it comes down as well, as well as the Little League. So we'll have to work through that a little bit as they go. But um, we're working very well with the lacrosse club to help them get their facilities because you know they would love to have something like the soccer complex but it's probably not going to happen so um, we're, we're, we're continue to work with them um, speaking of the stadium the press box we did um, ha be able to lower the cost already because we were able to receive a grant from the chemical bank for eighty thousand dollars so it'll replace the scoreboard and the sound system mm -hmm. so the sound system was in the original part of that press box and i think sometimes people forget what's all in that press box because you got sound you had scoreboard operator You've got a lot of equipment pieces that were lost in that fire, too. I think they think of just the structure that's in there. So um, that was very nice for Chemical Bank. Step up on that. It'll cost us about somewhere between seven and $9,000 for the installation. So uh, I think that's a great deal when you can use seven to nine to get 80 to, right. to mm -hmm. have a better press box in there going forward. Um, <clears throat> we uh, had the pre-bid meetings, and Barton Mallow's been working with the um, Bidders, we had, um, I think, 46 bids, three and a half per category. A little concern on a couple categories um, on all of the vendors. They worked through it today. I had a brief update from Daryl. Um, they're feeling pretty good on most of it. Um, they will have for FFO in a week uh, presentation of who they would recommend. And, and then December, it's coming to the full board for those projects going forward. And that was Adams HVAC um, at Dow High, which is a big piece. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, district-wide media centers, and locker rooms in the secondary buildings. Science labs. Science labs. Nice. I left something. I, I knew I left that. something. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Mary. So, um, Night for Success. So um, if you recall, uh, our volunteer program was kind of getting overwhelming. Uh, we weren't able to really use the volunteers the way we wanted to, plus we were running behind on background checks. And so um, in a discussion with... Um, and at United Way, uh, a few years ago, um, that discussion grew to end because they were doing Dow's volunteer program to Rob Valentine, who's been so good to us through the years. Dow put up some funds uh, to, for them to run our program and grow it like it has been growing. You've had a couple reports in front of you. Okay. It's, it's been fantastic. Um, so the grant was a two-year grant where they paid 20000 we paid 20000 and the grant is expiring. So now uh, the full cost would come back on us. And so Bob and I have been working night away, so be prepared. We'll probably have to build in next year 40000 into our budget. Um, we're right now working on a contract agreement that will show you the coming. There was a few pieces in there um, we want to tweak and change, so that's coming forward to you as well um, to continue that program going forward. Speaking of grants, school safety grant, we have Brian Kudos here. Brian wrote this grant, um, $204,603 to increase our safety initiatives, initiatives in the district. Um, the boot lockdown system for doors is, is a big piece of that grant. And make sure I say it right, Brian, I keep hard, hard to believe it, every door in the district. Classroom doors. Classroom doors in the district. Now, now some of the district doors haven't been replaced yet, so it'll be over time period. No sense of putting them on the old doors, so it'll become so then filming for our entryways and then the uh, garage doors in the uh, Center Park. That filming is safety filming. It's not bulletproof filming. It's If you took a bat, it'd take you three or four minutes to get through it, so it would slow some the bad guy down, which is the whole purpose of that. If you add that to um, all of the other things that we've 
beginning to do from sally port entries to video surveillance to card access readers to panic control buttons, lockdown buttons, digital radios, our crisis go, which were really fired up, that's taken off and really going out the district. They were turning down it, real powerful tool. The digital radios, um, our EOP being updated, Brian updated our district emergency operation plan. It's a model plan now. Um, Alice training. So we introduced that January 16th and 17th. We take that training to the next level. Um, and then you add in the, our, the, the school resource officer knowledge. We really are making some big strides in school safety going forward. I met with uh, <coughs> the representatives for the LPGA tournament from Dow Chemical coming. And so they would like Midland Public Schools um, partnership in that. So they're looking at parking um, issues throughout mm -hmm. the area. And so the talk of the two high schools and potentially Jefferson, uh, because this location, Jefferson Seaver Parking, would hold quite a bit location to the country club. Um, if you haven't read before or know anything about the first T program, take a look at that. Uh, similar to the tennis club, they would, it's part of the PE curriculum. They would donate equipment for us to do that. So that's going to be a big piece going forward. Um, the potential of using our buses, they will pay something for that. They wouldn't pay for something like that, but we're trying to get a little bit of advertisement for MPS out of that. And I think they're trying to find a way to maybe let us set up a booth. They're not going to let us put signs out there, but they're going to do something where we can talk about the school district a little bit that as well. So good partnership um, being created right there as well. If you recall, um, a month ago, the headlines Detroit paper talked about a large substitute provider, edge of staff, going under and leaving everybody behind. And, um, boy, I don't know. We look like geniuses, but I don't know if we were. But Cynthia came back from a conference a year or so ago and um, had the, heard that the edge of staff may have overextended themselves, cash flow, um, maybe in cash flow problems. And then we saw a couple issues in the district. One was that one month they drew our month funds a little early when they weren't supposed to. That was assigned to us, and then we were having trouble um, them filling the subs. And they weren't nearly as aggressive as our current today provider of PSG on uh, recruiting subs, and so we made the difficult de decision to switch over a year ago. We look pretty smart for that, except for you wonder how healthy PSG is. And so PSG has come out and given assurances of their health from audit records to cash flow statements. Um, so right now it looks like they're in very good shape. We'll have to watch that closely because of um, pretty much all of that used to ask customers are becoming PSG's customers. And it brand knows business. You can still you can have a lot of business and still be in cash flow issues. And so we'll have to watch them as we go. But right now it looks like they're in pretty good shape for us. So the crisis go. I mentioned that a powerful software tool does lots of things. But the opening piece is the ability to alert the entire district in lock tone mode, and multiple people be able to do it. So any staff member could issue a panic or alert on their phone. That panic alert would send to their user group. Um, an audible sound, a little bit like the presidential alert that you received on your phones, followed by an audible message. Communication back and forth as we go. Um, from there, the building administrator or district administrator could call full lockdown, depending on what we have, um, as ability for them to send pictures, text. Um, one day, class rosters can be loaded into it, so if they have to evacuate off staff, emergency plans, all those pieces can be loaded in that piece of software. It's on every device in the district. Um, staff's choice to put it on their phone or not, most are choosing to, to do so. And so it's really going to be a powerful tool as we go forward on those pieces of it. Um, most of the staff practice it already, so we're, we're getting it in pretty deep. And our first responders get all that too, so we're all collaborating. Yep. SROs are, low, are on that as well as the radio system. The, the police department will monitor that as well. MCA negotiations. Uh, it's hard to believe it's here already. Technically, um, we have until August, but as, as our past practice, we've started early, sell contracts early, and we're looking forward to doing that again. So we've been busy prepping. Uh, we're going to meet with uh, Mark in a few weeks, sounds like, our last communication about 4 o'clock today. Um, so we're, we're moving forward in some financials. We're going to share our financials and a little bit of our what we think we would like with the FFO and HR committee next two meetings to try to get all of you included in that conversation. So whoever's not on, the one odd duck that's not on that, I'll have to follow up with you on that side of it as we go forward. I don't think we need to go into a closed session yet. As negotiation goes, we do go and close and keep you up to date on that as we go forward. Santa Parade was Saturday, and so um, as Lynn said, we, we, it's always better when we have the bands. And so the weather's always iffy, and we wonder if we're going to have them. And um, Midland High was gone for, the, for their game. 
And so I give uh, Dow High credit. They stepped up and they marched the entire distance by themselves. Um, that w it really adds a lot to the van. So that was uh, give them kudos there. Bond sale two is coming up, so we're finally there, and that amount is forty thousand or forty million four hundred fifty thousand dollars. And so Bob's been a busy, busy guy with press boxes and all those pieces of it, but he's also been getting working with our consultants for that bond sale to go forward in the spring. Uh, most likely you will have that information on your December or January. I think it's more January. Um, that leaves us about the eight-week period that we need for that bond to go to sale. And that gets part of Adams and then all of the rest of the projects going forward. Seabert and Chestnut Hill moved into their additions today, so they're very excited about that. And the um, construction workers have already moved into the old gymnasiums and begin to work in that, those spots as well. As Bob mentioned, digital radios are now here and being implemented throughout the district. Our last PIC meeting um, was at Dow High, and it was on CTE programs. They got a real nice explanation of the over 40 <coughs> CTE programs we have in the district, as well as the ones that we pick up, like a, the, the agri-science out at Coleman, which is a great program for our kids as well. So it was pretty neat for them to see it. They got to go on, into the auto shop as well as to see Lance and what he does out there real quickly. So if you haven't seen that, it's on film. We now film it. We took off-site and did filming. Hopefully that came out good, but it's on our website. It did come out good. I was in Mexico and watched it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's great. That's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. All right. At this point, uh, we'll go into closed session, but then before we go in, if students, again, if you have, need anyone to sign anything, we can. So in order to go into closed session, I'll need a motion. Did you want to go back to the nominating committee, or is that not important? Uh, I can mention the nominating committee. Uh, we would get the votes in, and the three votes, uh, the three chosen, Pam Singer with five votes, Lynn Baker with four votes, and Mary Fidel with three votes. So these three will be uh, the nominating committee, and they'll come and, and bring a recommendation to the board. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Pam, you might want to mention why we go into closed. Sure. We go into closed uh, in order to do our superintendent evaluation. So the superintendent has an opportunity to uh, a request to go into closed session for that. So um, he has requested to do so. So we'll go in, and the uh, superintendent evaluation is quite a process. We have uh, many different indicators. I think it's 36 different indicators that we will look at and go through a rubric on each one in order to uh, evaluate Mr. Sherrill. And then his evaluation also includes uh, student growth data and achievement data, and that is all tied in to administrators and teachers along the way. So uh, it's a really neat process because everyone is connected all along the way with their evaluations. So Formal actions next month, so there's no action tonight. Right. All right, at this time I'll accept a motion. I move that we go into uh, adjourn this portion to go in. No, adjourn Just this portion. To, no, no adjourn. Go, go into the closed session. Right. I support. Moved by Mary, support by Angela. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And that's unanimous. And you can stay and wait for us to adjourn, but it's really.